Um, and I think for a long, long time, drug cases have been regarded as victimless crimes. Uh, crimes that don't affect other people, that it's really just the user or the dealer. But if you have walked through the Tenderloin at any time of the day in the last 10 years, specifically in the last three years, it has been a state of deterioration that has gone far beyond anyone's imagination. It, so there's this program called Safe Passage in the Tenderloin. It's uh, sponsored by the, the Tenderloin Community Benefit District. And a group of mothers, now it's probably like, maybe like 13 or 14 years ago by now, they, they said, okay, well, you know, we have kids in the Tenderloin. The Tenderloin is the part of the city that has the highest concentration of children in the entire city, if you can imagine that. And these moms said, okay, we've got to get our kids from home to the Tenderloin Community School, right. an elementary school, <clears throat> and then they've got to get to their after school programs after that. It's only five blocks away. But they have to run this gauntlet of some of the worst human misery you can ever imagine. Drug dealers, people laying out on the sidewalk, feces, violence. And so this, this group of moms said, okay, we're gonna do something about this. And they created a program called Safe Passage. And essentially what they do is they put volunteers on every single corner between the school and the community center, the children's uh, after school program. And they make sure that the kids have an unexceptional experience walking those five blocks. And now I don't, number one, the program still exists. It's amazing that community comes together this way. But number two, this program should never have existed in the first place, never. And now the conditions are even worse. And for judges to say that these drug crimes do not affect anyone else, that they are victimless crimes, is an absolute travesty in my opinion. And the, and the opinions I'm speaking today are the, my own opinions. <laughs> but there needs to be a sea change in the way that, that we present these cases in court. We filed a bunch of detention motions. We've asked the judges to keep, keep people who are the worst offenders in custody during the pendency of their cases, and still they get let out. And so, you know, some of them are staying in. I mean, we're, we're beginning to have that change, right? The change in the way that judges will view them and the way that community views them. Like if you're outside of the Tenderloin, maybe you don't know this is a problem, right? But it is a problem. It has been a problem for a very, very long time. And the people who suffer the most for it are the children because it normalizes this type of behavior for them. It makes it easier for drug dealers to prey upon them and for them to get subsumed into the same type of spiral of desperation and desolation that is existing in their community already. Um, that's a long way of saying yes, judges. Judges, uh, we need to make, really think about who we're, we are electing and who we advocate for for appointment into these positions. Um, because ultimately, our, our system works when people have their eyes open to what really is the problem and that they are not closed off to hearing the truth from the people who represent the people.